on today's episode. You've got questions? I got answers. No, this isn't Radio Shack. This is Gonst FM, off air. Welcome, ghouls, ghoulettes, and guesties to Gonst FM Off Air, the official podcast companion to 66.6 Gonst FM, the radio station dedicated to the band Ghost and the Gonst Boasting community. I'm Richie, a.k.a. Papa X, a.k.a. Papa Me Meritus, as so lovingly named by the Gonst Posting community. If this is your first episode, welcome. If you have no idea what this is, please go listen to the episode titled What is Gonst FM? If you're familiar with this program, welcome back. In our Gonst Posting Facebook group this week, which if you would like to join Gonst Posting, scroll down to the show notes below and click the link that says Gonst Posting on Facebook and it'll take you there. But again, in our Gonst Posting group this week, I sent out a question asking you to give me questions because I wanted to answer them for you and I got quite a bit back. So let's not waste any time. Let's jump into it. This is a Q&A episode for those of you that are in Gonst Posting. Jessica Von Hammersmark asks, What is the deal with SoupQuest anyway? And I'm going to read it back in the way that I hear it, because every time I hear anybody ask, what is the deal, I think about Jerry Seinfeld. So, what is the deal with SoupQuest anyway? SoupQuest is a very huge inside joke in the Goss posting group, and it has to do with Papa Emeritus I. Well, there was a picture floating around on the internet of an Applebee's sign in the parking lot. And where they normally put the lettering for any kind of special, it said, try our $5 piss. So I just kind of started laughing. And I said, well, let me put a picture of Papa Emeritus the first on here. And I put a voice or a thought bubble out and it said, only $5? Like, <laughs> like he was fucking amazed at this shit, right? So. Jess had already started making uh, Soup Quest a thing, uh, maybe, I don't know, probably a month before this happened. <laughs> and it was basically just uh, Primo, uh, Papa Matters the First, just kind of being inserted in like, hey, I like a fine bisque, or I like a good potato soup, or just anything like that. And I don't remember exactly how. But somehow these got crossed. You know how in Ghostbusters you're not supposed to cross the streams? Well, unfortunately for everybody involved with Gonst posting, Jess and I crossed the fucking streams. And somehow this became $5 piss soup. There you have it. For some fucking reason, Soup Quest has been combined with the piss meme and it has, has taken on a life of its own. But Soup Quest continues because anytime we post anything to do, with Soup or Primo in this group, Soup Quest gets brought up, and it's fucking hilarious. Next question. Jose Martinez writes, KY jelly or olive oil? Well, (laughs) again, olive oil is an inside joke that started all because of a fanfic to do with Papa Emeritus III, which if you're familiar with any of these things, again, Papa Emeritus III just kind of happens to be the center point of every goddamn food-based joke to do with Ghost. So with this question, I will say olive oil because it is much more versatile. And no, I will not be answering any further questions on that. Stephanie Guthrie asks, what has been the most frustrating slash rewarding part about getting Gonst FM and now the podcast going? And also, what is the coolest thing that's happened to you so far because of the station or the podcast? Honestly, I think the most actual frustrating part has been getting people walked through signing up on Station Head because it's frustrating to both have detailed instructions on how to do it and then Station Head itself offering a frequently asked questions section. And all you got to do is just pay attention and read it and it's pretty easy to do but i I could not tell you the amount of times my inbox has been flooded with like hey what do i do it's like there's stuff right there you know like i'm not trying to sound like an ass but it is frustrating whenever like the information's there you just got to look at it and and you got to read it as for the rewarding part 
the the rewarding part has been the friendships and interactions, hands down. What's the coolest thing that's happened to me so far because of the station or podcast? Well, I actually cannot give that information away just yet because there's been a couple of cool things that have happened. Pupper Emeritus the Fourth on TikTok. Yes, please go follow Pupper Emeritus the Fourth on TikTok. God damn it. Where do you see Gonst FM in a year? Typically, I don't look that far ahead. I, I really barely even look a few months ahead, if at all. I do have the rest of this calendar year's radio rituals planned out, but that's mostly because this is literally a brand new thing, and I'm trying to make sure that the ideas are there. As far as a year from now, it's hard to say. I think I'll still be doing it. I like to be you know, real about it and just say that I see Gonst FM still being on Station Head and still being in podcast form. And I'm hoping to have at least a thousand followers on the Station Head channel by then. I know I've had, uh, we, just, we just reached 450 as of this recording and we started in November of 2023. But I'm pretty old school in terms of how whenever I was in a band, we used to just do it with flyers like old school. We would print flyers on and put that stuff up around town everywhere. And it was just word of mouth and advertising and stuff like that. And in today's digital world, it's like you, you have everybody literally at the palm of your hand to just send out, hey, come check it out. But yeah, I, I think in a year, hopefully I would like to see at least a thousand followers and maybe two broadcasts a month instead of just one. But we'll see. Tayari Sapphire asks, what's the most rewarding slash your favorite part of being in the ghost community and interacting with fellow gosters? And what's the best part of running a podcast and a radio station? It's a sense of belonging. The rewarding aspect of it, I think for me is, again, it's the friendships because there are so many people that I have met in this community that are just so kind hearted and the most wonderful fucking people I've ever known. My favorite part? Probably Gaunt's posting, honestly. It's very fucking thrilling to know that there are over 2,000 other people that have the same fucked up sense of humor that I do and that our admins do and that, you know, we all fucking do. And the second part was, what's the best part of running a podcast and station? Uh, the podcast part of it's fun. It's fun to be able to interview people and just to, to kind of uh, give my two cents on music and things like that and just, and just talk and talk and talk because I can fucking talk. But the best part about the radio station, honestly, is doing the radio rituals every month and getting to hang out in the chat room with all you guys, because that is the most fucking fun time. And even though I know that chat room is like warp speed or whatever, it's still fucking fun. I love it when it's just on fire and people are just talking and visiting. It, we're a giant family, so this is like, it's like a fucking cookout every month with ghost music playing. It's, it's badass. I love it. Katie McAllister asks, why them goody shorts so damn goody licious? Because they're on my ass. That's all I got. Next question. Arian Preston asks, what is it to have ghost and therefore everything? Having ghost gives me this giant family that I think I've always fucking needed. And quite frankly, I would probably hang around all of these people even without the band. And to me, that is everything. So for me, having ghosts and everything means having ghosts and having you guys. There is a second question from Jessica Von Amersmark, and it asks, how did you first find Gaunt's posting? Funny enough, Howie, the guy that created Gaunt's posting, invited me directly. And I think this was whenever we only had maybe like 10 or 20 members. I was one of the very first people to come into this group when it was like just a thought. I was in another group and I was posting memes. Just because I was like, eh, I'm fucking, I'm just going to make memes. My memes are the reason I got invited. There is a reason the Gonst Posting community has named me Papa Meme Eritus. It's the memes, baby. Next question. Vincenzo De Leon asks, favorite ghost fan creators or tribute bands? That's a good question. Okay, so tribute bands, obviously, Pope Stars from the UK are really great. I think Emeritus is actually a really good band as well. I, I was on Instagram the other day, and I came across a few myself in the timeline. But one that stuck out to me was the tribute band Ghouls, and I want to say they are from Mexico. 
and on their Instagram, there are a few videos of the songs they were playing, but one of them was Call Me Little Sunshine. And when I tell you that it was very phenomenal sounding, I, I really mean that in every sense of the word. That was, that was a really good cover. And as far as ghost fan creators, I got to be, I know this is going to sound very blanketed, but I, and I really mean this. I think a lot of the fan creators that I have come across are phenomenal because everybody has a different talent. Everybody is so fucking good in this community to me. As far as like some of my favorites though, like there is an Instagram named Octoghoul who I'll go ahead and spoil it right now. I'm actually going to be interviewing this person coming up around May or so. And they have taken it upon themselves to do an entire ghost cover album. And they are playing every instrument, guitar, bass, keyboards, drums, doing the vocals and all of that stuff. And their girlfriend has been helping them with the pop of face paint and the uh, background backdrops that he's drawn up and stuff. So he's doing an album and he's also doing a video project to go along with the music that he's made. And I've seen a couple of clips of it here and there and it's so fucking good. Like, holy shit. This this kid is 20 years old and he sounds like a fucking prodigy and I am excited as hell to talk to him about this. I got to tell you that that is probably the coolest thing about this band also is the inspiration to musicians as well as artists. Like I've probably never seen a more talented group of fan creators than I have in this community. Melissa Phelps asks how much copia plush can a copia plush plush if a copia plush could plush plush. A potato sack full. Alyssa Stamps asks, what is your favorite Gonst meme creation? Being who I am, that's a tough one. Because I pride myself big time on making memes in this fucking group. I'm pretty sure that I have like three. When Christmas time was coming around, I put Papa Emeritus IV's face on Clark Griswold for the Christmas Vacation movie poster. The facial symmetry could not have matched any better. It's funny as hell. One of the other ones was the Boondock Taints, which it was a movie poster ripoff of the Boondock Saints. And I had Secundo and Terzo on there, and then where Willem Dafoe's face was in the little box at the top near the uh, cast and crew, I put Papa Nil up there, and god damn, it was hilarious as shit to me. I love doing movie poster stuff, because uh, it, it writes itself more often than not. But I think my actual very favorite meme that I've made is from American Pie. When Jim gets caught fucking the pie by his dad and he turns around, he's just like, oh, it's not what it looks like. I put Terzo's face in shock with his dick in the pie looking at the camera and then the shot of Jim and his father sitting at the table with the pie all fucked up. And he's just like, well, we'll just tell your mother that uh, that uh, we ate it all. I put Papa Nil's face on Eugene Levy and I put a very shameful looking Terzo on Jason Biggs face and I typed out, well, just tell Seaster that, uh, that uh, we ate it all. Those are some of my very favorite memes, <laughs> like, ever. Emma Goodrich asks, what transforms ghosts from casual listening to full-blown obsession for fans? I think the lore does that. That's what it did for me. Because I heard the music, and I was like, the music's good. And then I got hooked even more whenever I dug deeper into the catalog. I was like, this band is really fucking good. And then whenever I found out there was a story and lore behind it, I lost my shit because I love stuff like that. I absolutely enjoy the fact that this band looks the way it does, and there's a reasoning behind it. There's a story there. She also asks, how did Ghost evolve after Mariana Cross went viral on TikTok, bringing in an influx of new fans? As someone who found them on TikTok in 2022, I'm curious about how the fandom changed pre-2022 to now. I don't know if it's necessarily that the fandom changed. I, I think uh, young, young crowds will always join as generations pass by. KISS is a prime example of that. I know people right now in 2024 that are in their early to late 20s, like in that range, and they like KISS. And KISS came out 50 years ago. And I think that as far as Ghost evolving after that happened, I don't necessarily think it's the fault of Mariana Cross. Bands evolve no matter what happens. Being a musician myself, I don't like to write the same shit over and over again. It gets fucking stale and boring. And I feel like Ghost had already been established with the music they were creating during the first three albums. And I feel like Prekel was kind of the 
door creaking open to Tobias's more queen and ABBA influences and, you know, stuff like that. And then when Impera came out, it was full blown stadium and arena rock, which again, he is influenced by a lot of this shit. Think about the fact that Motley Crue and Kiss were some of the first bands he listened to from his brother's record collection. I think it's great. I think it's all fantastic. I love seeing the influx of new people coming in and enjoying the band and digging deeper into the lore and getting even more enthralled. It's, it's a beautiful fucking thing. Lisa CCF asks, are you ever too old to Gonst? And again, not saying Gonst as in the band Ghost. We're saying Gonst as in the goofy aspect of the band Ghost. And are you ever too old to be a goof? Are you ever too old to be fun-loving and be silly? No, you're never too old for that shit. In fact, I think the older you get, the more Gonsty you get. The Gonst father himself, Howie Brown, asks, Is there a sliding scale on how Gonst one can be? In fact, there is. That goes from 0 to 666. And if you're already at a 666 and you lose that Gonst, it's, uh, it's a long way down. Yeah, I just did that. I have dad jokes for weeks. Go fuck yourself. And finally, Zminat asks, have you seen that pic of Secundo that wore the I'm with stupid T? I know which picture you're talking about. Yes, I have seen it. And I regret not saving it because like a fart in the wind, that picture was fucking gone. I cannot find that motherfucker anywhere. I know this might be a shorter episode again, but you know, it, it's just a Q&A. It was just something fun for us to do at the Gons posting group. And I appreciate you sending all your questions in. Maybe we'll do some more of these in the future if you like this episode. You can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify for past, present, and future episodes. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube and click the notification bell to get future alerts. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at GonstFM. We have merchandise available in our T Public store. You can follow GonstFM on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter slash X at GonstFM on everything. If you would like to make a donation to keep both the radio station and podcast versions of Gonst FM going, you can make a donation to Venmo using Gonst FM, or you can make it on PayPal using Gonst FM at gmail.com for the recipient. We also have the official Gonst FM Apple Music and Spotify Music profiles that contain the playlists from every radio ritual that happens on Station Head. Just the music, nothing more, nothing less. All of this can be found by scrolling to the show notes below and clicking the links on each one individually. If you're listening on YouTube, there will be a singular link tree link and you can click that and all of these things will be available within that. And so with that, my dearest Gonslings, this episode comes to a close. Some of you, I will see in internet land and the rest of you, I will see in Gons posting. Take care of yourselves and remember, until next time, in Gonst, we tranced. I'm Richie. I'll see you guys later.